In terms of coronaviruses in general, uh, it's right to say that before this outbreak, it was a fairly backwater area of virus research. Um, there are human coronaviruses that cause colds. They've been around for a very long time, but they're not particularly serious diseases. But now the labs are humming. Scientists here at Bristol University are some of the few who are growing the human coronavirus involved in this outbreak. The name of the virus is SARS-CoV-2. They're working out how the virus interacts with the cells in the body and then how the cells in the body respond. The virus gets its name from the crown-like spikes that adorn its membrane, corona being Spanish for crown. The membrane contains the virus's genome, in other words, its genetic data, wrapped up in virus proteins. When the virus attaches itself to a human cell, it starts to tell it how to make its own virus proteins, which not only helps the virus to thrive inside our bodies, but can confound the human immune system. Scientists hope to decipher the genome messages the virus is sending and learn what the resulting proteins actually do. You really need to start to dissect the virus on many different levels, dissect our immune response and so on and so forth. And so the work we're doing here, or some of the work we're doing here, is going to be to start to underpin that, which is to sort of say, this is what the virus does, this is how it gets into a cell, this is the things it makes, these are the things it does to a cell, these are the parts of a cell uh, that it disables and makes a mess of in order to make its own life easier. Uh, and that process begins here, really. Knowing what the virus does when it gets into a cell will help scientists around the world understand what they could do to kill or prevent the growth of the virus. The Bristol team are also making copies of the virus to help test vaccines, drugs and other diagnostic tools. And it's high risk work. We can't actually go into the lab where the viruses are being made or identify where it's located. The live virus itself is handled at what's called uh, containment level 3. Because this is a, a virus that's um, sort of spread via aerosols, um, we have even another degree of safety that we have a sealed cabinet and we work with the virus in that cabinet using a, a glove system. So the virus you know, can't get out of that cabinet and then it's in another contained room and then that's in another contained laboratory. SARS-CoV-2 isn't the first coronavirus to cause serious illnesses in humans. Back in the early 2000s, the original SARS outbreak killed over 700 people worldwide. One in 10 died from the disease, but it didn't spread very well. A decade later, hundreds died of the MERS virus. It was fatal in about a third, but again, it didn't spread very well. This new coronavirus seems to spread well, but is lethal in a relatively small percentage of people. You could say this virus has kind of hit something of a sweet spot in terms of uh, being able to cause disease in humans relatively efficiently, but not such a dramatic, uh, debilitating disease very quickly, which means that the people that are infected are able to make more contacts with more other people and so the virus spreads further. But studying the other human coronaviruses, MERS and SARS-1, has helped scientists understand what might work to help fight it. We know that it's actually very closely related to existing coronaviruses. So that means that people have already characterised a lot of things during the SARS, you know, the first SARS outbreak. Um, they looked at trialling vaccines, they looked at uh, potential antiviral medicines, they looked at uh, diagnostics, and already some of these are being used on the, the SARS coronavirus too. The first clinical trial of an experimental vaccine is about to be tested on 45 adults in Seattle. The study will test the safety of various doses of the vaccine and if it produces an immune response. In the response to the outbreak, what, what you're hoping for is a vaccine, or maybe drugs if we're very lucky, uh, and hopefully those will pan out and they will pan out very quickly. But there are no guarantees it will be effective and there are still holes in our knowledge. What we don't know, however, is the transmission seems to be different to uh, other human pathogenic coronaviruses. Uh, we know it's spreading more rapidly. It doesn't seem to be as contained as, as we were able to with our SARS coronavirus. Um, we don't know for any of these viruses really um, a lot about their pathogenesis. So what do you mean when you say pathogenic? Well, how they, how they really cause disease, how they interact with the host 
to cause uh, uh, acute respiratory syndrome. The pace of experimental work is extraordinary, but until more work is done here in Bristol and around the world, the best defence against the virus is still soap and water.